Hello, and welcome back to another purely audio father-son talk. And today we will not be talking about Wheel of Time. That has not been finished quite yet, though once Father Green, I guess that's what I'll refer you here as, finishes oh the series, uh, we will be returning and doing a hindsight talking chat overall about the series. But today, uh, Mark Green, my father here, is just going to tell you a fun story about meeting a legend. And without further ado, how you doing, Dad? Okay, and uh, I am about halfway through the final battle, so I can the end is in sight, and I'm uh, looking forward to wrapping that up. So, um, like most of my peers back in the '60s and '70s, I read a lot of science fiction, and then I ended up going to a an engineering school as an undergrad. Um, Case Institute of Technology was merging with Case Western Reserve University to form Case Western Reserve. Um, but at the time I was there, from 70 to 74, the engineers were always still on the case side, and the, the poets and the plumbers, the poets were all down on the other side of Euclid Avenue um, on the Western Reserve side. So after dinner um, on weeknights, usually, uh, we'd wander back from our dining hall up to our dormitories, and my um, dining hall uh, Michelson, named after a Nobel laureate who um, invented the cloud chamber. Um, we'd wander in and everybody would throw a quarter in the ashtray. Yes, there were still ashtrays and people still smoked in public back then. Not you, though. Uh, not me. <laughs> and uh, ever. <clears throat> so we'd throw our quarters in and then once the evening news was done, Star Trek would come on. Is this and still the Cron Cronkite era? This is Uncle Walter. Yes, okay. this is the Cronkite era. And... Um, Vietnam War is still going on. We're still checking out our draft numbers um, once a year to make sure we weren't about to be taken away to uh, be cannon fodder in Vietnam. Um, so anyway, after Uncle Walter or the local news, I can't remember the sequence back then, uh, Star Trek would come on. And whoever could first identify the name of the Star Trek episode would get all the money that had been thrown in the ashtray. And Star Trek was already in syndication then. The primary running of it was back in the 60s. So I was the first one up one day. And um, after I sat down, dropped my quarter in the ashtray, I started watching the news, this old guy wanders in up the stairs that led down into this sunken um, room. Uh, says, is this case? And I turned around and looked at him and said, yeah and turned back and looked at the TV. So who's this guy? And a couple minutes went by. He's kind of like looking at the news with me. And he goes, so this is the engineering school, right? And I said, yeah, and turned back around. By now, a couple of other people had kind of wandered in. Real quick, campus security-wise, huge no-no in my day. In my college, if someone just wandered in, you call someone. There was no security of any kind ever. So the front doors weren't locked to your No, door. no. Good Lord, no. You could just wander <laughs> up to any floor at any time. Um, Different era. Yeah. <laughs> Different era. Okay, sorry. Continue. Uh, to, to buy drugs or if you were the FBI to conduct a bust or whatever. You know, just there was no security at that point whatsoever. Uh, you could wander into the chem labs. There was no security there. Um, and... If you knew where you were going, you could grab a jar of lysergic acid. Or um, <laughs> we had a, a very small nuclear reactor in the physics lab, and uh, there was no security around that small nuclear reactor. Now, it, it was incapable of going critical or anything like that. Okay. But still, there were nuclear isotopes around that we messed with in physics class and stuff, and there was no there, security. There were measures before you messed with isotopes and stuff, though, I imagine, though. You had to wear stuff. Or, oh, well, everybody yeah, wore yeah. the right safety stuff okay. when they were dealing with chemicals and stuff like that. Sure. But there wasn't anything to stop some idiot from coming in off the street and doing something that they shouldn't do. It was a different world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Back on topic. I just got <clears throat> distracted. So anyway, this old guy's standing there in the back of the room and kids are filtering in all guys. There were like five women at case at that point. Western Reserve was more than half women, but it was all guys, believe me. Um, and he said, well, would any of you guys like to talk about science fiction? And um, it's not a question. I think it was me who said, well, Star Trek's about to start. And um, somebody else, uh, I don't, have no idea who at this point, said, um, who are you or something to that effect? And he goes, well, I thought maybe some of you guys might like to spend a few. No, 
No, no, no. The question was, what are you doing here? That was what was asked. And the guy said, well, I'm going to be giving a speech here in Cleveland um, this evening, and I've got some time to kill. And I thought some of you might like to just talk about science fiction, maybe some of my books. And at that point, one of the guys who just want, wandered in kind of keyed into, oh, my God, you're Isaac Asimov. And um, once that revelation happened, um, there was a stampede to the elevators in the stairwell to um, run up and get books to have him sign them and that sort of thing. And uh, I, I can't say for sure how long he was there. I'm sure it was at least a half hour. I doubt that it was more than an hour. But um, I'm, I hope Daniel will post on um, oh, give me his the channel yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pictures of him with Polaroid cameras that were taken then. Um, certainly nobody had ever dreamed of a portable phone, much less one with a camera in it. Um, but a couple of guys got their Polaroid cameras and took pictures of him sitting there in the lobby of our dorm, signing books and talking about the laws of robotics and the Foundation Trilogy and, and that sort of stuff until he wandered off into the night to go give his speech. And uh, it was certainly the, the talk of breakfast the next day back at the mess hall. So there's so much to unpack here that's funny <laughs> and amazing for so many different reasons. But first of all, can you contextualize for some people who may not know who exactly Isaac Asimov is and why he's so important? Well, everybody who had ever read any science fiction, unless your science fiction reading stopped with Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, knew him as one of the giants of science fiction of the time. He had written literally hundreds of books. I think he may hold the record for the most published books by anybody. PhD in biology. Across genres. I think that's true. And he wrote across genres, oh yeah. my God. Um, there was a uh, uh, even a quasi-pornographic book. There had been a hit bestseller called The Sensuous Woman, followed by a book called The Sensuous Man about sexual technique and all that sort of stuff back in the age of sexual revolution in the 60s. And Isaac Asimov then published The, the Sensuous Dirty Old Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was so like him to do. But the number of topics that he wrote on were just amazing. And everybody knew his Foundation trilogy, his iRobot. Um, and the, the, I, the laws of robotics are now just a staple of sci-fi, and he invented them. Well, and everybody in AI knows yeah. them, yeah. Um, for sure. Um, and the, he was a multi-Hugo Award winner, which is the prize in science fiction writing. He was published in Analog Magazine all the time. Um, I knew that a lot of the great science fiction authors like Theodore Sturgeon had written for Star Trek. I didn't know whether he had or not, but Daniel, you looked into that. Yeah. So he had written some scathing reviews about the uh, accuracy of the original Star Trek, which if you're a Star Trek fan you know it's pretty good. Like it's the not, scientific accuracy. Yeah, the scientific accuracy is pretty good. So he was a bit of a stickler. But I, I want to put myself in... And you said he was also a friend of Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, on his Wikipedia page, it says they're friends. So apparently he's a friend who's willing to give harsh criticism. <laughs> um, but I want to put myself in, in Asimov's shoes real quick. So you're called into Cleveland to give a speech. You got a few hours to kill. About sci-fi. About sci-fi. You got a few hours to kill. And what you decide to do is... Well, I'm going to go make some nerds nights. <laughs> so you go into Case, which is the hive of your people, oh, it's I'm nerve sure. center. I'm, exactly. Or maybe he just wanted to have fun talking about his books for an hour yeah, or so. Yeah, but he knew what he was doing. Yeah, oh yeah, he's and, a smart guy. <laughs> so he goes to a common area, sees some guy watching, you know, the news, and he knows... This kid's probably waiting for Star Trek. Because he, uh, he might know the TV. I doubt when you walk into a new town, you would know Star Trek's coming on after the news. Oh, is it different? Like every town? Oh, this is in? not... This is syndication. Um, this is oh. the time between 7 and 8 o'clock where different channels put on different stuff. So okay. I doubt that he knew why I was there or what was coming on. He might have just thought I was there to watch the news. So granted, but then you said, well, we're about to watch Star Trek. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he went, I got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No doubt he tweaked onto that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he then just kind of lets it play out for a little while. Okay, let's let's see who's going to recognize me. More people come in. And then finally, he has to give you the hint, well, I'm going to talk about my books. And then someone goes, you're Isaac Asimov. <laughs> well, but, I mean, if he just walked in the door and said, hi, I'm Isaac Asimov, that would have seemed an incredibly egotistical thing to have done. So. Sure, sure. He did the roundabout polite version of that. I guess, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which it was really pretty cool. awesome for everybody, though. I mean, I'll never forget it, and that was almost 50 years ago. 
Um, but that so, was freaking awesome. So in the in the arc of storytelling, I have to ask, no one got the ashtray. <laughs> You know, there was so much going on that night. Somebody could have stolen everything in the ashtray, and I doubt that we would have noticed. I certainly wouldn't know now, 50 years later, what happened to the money in the ashtray, but I would hope that it carried over to the next night. For all you know, As Asimov pocketed on his way he out. He could have very well <laughs> pocketed the money, yeah. Um, do you remember the impression of him as a person? He seemed like a nice guy. Well, I was starstruck. I think we all were. I mean, we're all teenagers at that point, undergrads in college, and majoring in engineering or science of one kind or another, and Isaac Asimov, the grand poobah of science fiction, just walks in. Someone who's um, probably inspired some of these people to pursue these degrees. Almost certainly, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, he wanted to talk about stuff. He wanted to engage in lively debate with us about some of the things that he'd put forth, like about the genetic mutation that's at the heart of the Foundation trilogy. And there were probably... 20 or 30 of us in the room by the time it was over. I'm surprised that nobody went running to all the other dorms and filled up the whole place, but that, that didn't happen. It just stayed guys from our dorm. Um, but he signed books like a very gracious gentleman while he was talking and answering questions. Yeah. That's, that's Again, so cool. I can't remember a lot of this in detail. It was many decades ago that this happened, but I've got picture proof. Yeah. <laughs> For fantasy fans out there, this is the equivalent of you're about to sit down for D&D &D and Tolkien walks in the room or Martin, really Martin walks in the room. Uh, more Tolkien than more Martin. Tolkien. More, yeah, um, <laughs> truly awesome. Uh, you yeah. have pictures that you're going to give me that I can put up in the background while yeah. we're talking here and show. Yeah. Um, any other details stand out to you? Anything else? No, that's all, that's all I can remember. And again, this is an old memory. I'm sure some of this is wrong and there's probably some cool tidbits that I've forgotten. But basically, that's that's what happened and I remember it pretty clearly. I just love that story. <laughs> it's a great story. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Dad. You bet. Like and subscribe. All that fun stuff. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.